In this video, we're going to talk all about enums in Java. We'll go over what they are and when you should use them, and walk through some concrete examples of how you can implement them in your Java programs. My name's John. I'm thrilled to have you here with me. Let's get right to it. So what exactly is an enum? Enum is just short for enumeration. An enum is used when you have something that has a predefined set of values that don't change. A common example people use is like days of the week. They're always going to be the exact same seven days, and they're never going to change. So you might want to define in your code what those seven days of the week are in a way that people just can't add more days of the week because that just wouldn't make sense. So using that example, let's go ahead and create that enum for days of the week. The easiest way to do that in Eclipse is to just go ahead and right click wherever you want that enum to be and go to new. And this is how you usually would create a class, but instead we're going to pick enum. Just like a class, you can name it whatever you want, but we're going to name it days of the week. And hit finish, and there you go. You can see it looks an awful lot like a class, but instead of public class days of the week, it says public enum days of the week. So now we have the shell of our enum, but now how do we go about listing the set of valid days of the week? Well, we can just do it right here in a comma separated list. So we can just say Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. And we do have to end our comma separated list with a semicolon. A couple of things to note here though. Although it's totally valid to have these days of the week enum entries as all lowercase, it's typically the convention to have these in all uppercase. In Eclipse, there's actually a cool shortcut for making text uppercase, and it's just Control Shift X. By the way, check out this video here if you want even more awesome Eclipse shortcuts. So how do you go about actually using these values? Back in our main method, we can create an object of type days of the week just like we could for any other type of object. So days of the week day equals, you might be thinking, we'll say, okay, new days of the week. But if we try and do that with an enum, Java is going to give us an error. Cannot instantiate the type days of the week. That's one thing that's different about enums than any other typical Java class. Because an enum is intended to be a predefined set of values, you can't use the new keyword to just create new values. So what you'll be doing is just using the existing values. So you'll just say days of the week dot, and then you have your choice of any of those days of the week to use. Let's say we wanted to pick Thursday. So now this day variable has the value of Thursday. And you can use this variable in your code similar to how you would use any other type of variable. For example, you could say if the day equals days of the week dot Thursday, print out, yay, it's almost Friday. And if we run our code, of course, since the day we created was Thursday, it prints out, yay, it's almost Friday. All enum classes in Java actually extend from the java.lang.enum enum class. You don't have to put extends enum or anything here. Java just does that automatically. But because it extends the enum class, it gives you some built-in functionality that's pretty cool. For example, if you wanted to get all of the possible values of that enum, you can just say days of the week dot values. This actually returns an array of all the possible days of the week. So if we wanted to do something like print them all out, we can just do a simple for each loop. So for each days of the week, call it my day. So this will loop through every possible value in our days of the week enum. So all you have to do is print out my day inside that loop, and we can see it prints out all the possible values of our enum. But there's even more really cool things you can do with your enums. For this example, I've created an enum of cereals. We've got Cap'n Crunch, Fruit Loops, Reese's Puffs, and Cocoa Puffs. Real quickly though, one thing I like to do with my enums is put each enum entry on a different line like this. I just think it makes your enums a little bit more readable. Plus now there's more room for my beautiful face here in the corner. Just like your regular Java classes, your enums can have fields. So what we can do is add a field here like an int. Let's call it level of deliciousness. And we can also create a serials constructor that takes in a value for that field of deliciousness. In this constructor, we would just set this dot level of deliciousness to be equal to the level of deliciousness passed in. But now you can see we have an error for each of these. That's because now in order to create each serial enum, we have to give it the level of deliciousness. We can pass that in here as a parameter at each one of these declarations. So let's go between zero and 100. Captain Crunch would be like a 50. Fruit Loops I like a little more. Let's say that's like a 60. Reese's Puffs though, probably my favorite. Let's do a straight up 100. And Cocoa Puffs about a 75. And now we can save that and back in our main code, we can get any of those cereals level of deliciousness by just calling cereals dot whichever one we're interested in. Let's say Fruit Loops and say Fruit Loops dot level of deliciousness. And we can just print that out if we want. And we get 60, which was 
the level of deliciousness of Fruit Loops. What you'll probably want to do with these fields is make them final so that they can't be changed for each entry. So why would you want to do that? Well, if you don't have final, what somebody can do, they can change that value, and that's probably not something you want to allow. So they can say cereals dot Fruit Loops dot level of deliciousness equals 107. And we can see that that change actually does take effect. So somebody can go in and just change Fruit Loops to be a level of deliciousness of 107. Now Fruit Loops are good, don't get me wrong, but they're not 107 good. So this isn't something we want to allow. So to make it so that value can't be changed once it's set, we just make this final. And then back in our main code, we can see that we get an error when we try to change that value. So making this field final stops the Fruit Loop fanboys from being able to mess things up. And you're not limited to just one field here. You can have more if you like. So you might also want something like final double price. All you have to do is just add that as another parameter to your constructor and pass in a value for that new field in each declaration here. If you like this video or learned something, please let me know by hitting the like button. Be sure to check out these other videos here to keep on learning. I also have a full Java course available in a link down in the description if you're interested. Oh man, I spelled Captain Crunch wrong. I am ashamed.